gazing into the winter night sky in the northern hemisphere, the constellation of Virgo is on display. When we observe Virgo, we are looking at an angle away from the disk of the Milky Way, and hence the density of stars and nebulae and dust and stellar debris in that direction is significantly less. Looking toward Virgo, we can gaze outward into the great expanse of the universe beyond. And if you magnify that view using just an amateur telescope, you see not just stars, but hundreds if not thousands of tiny dim galaxies stretching out to the limits of your scope's resolution. You can see them as they existed millions of years ago, back in time because they are millions of light years away. In reality, our Milky Way galaxy is surrounded by perhaps billions or trillions of galaxies out to the edge of the universe in all directions. Due to the vast distances from our viewpoint, even with the most powerful telescopes ever built, it is impossible to see any one single star within any of those galaxies, even the closest, which is the Andromeda galaxy. They are just too far away. But when one of those stars reaches the end of its life cycle and goes supernova, well then, even from millions of light years away, it is sometimes possible to observe it. The energy release of one of these events may be calculatable to astrophysicists, but the power is basically incomprehensible to the human mind. Recently, when I learned that imaging one of these events was within reach of my telescopes, I could hardly believe it. In the galaxy NGC 4216, sometimes called the Silver Streak Galaxy in the Virgo Galaxy Cluster, the first supernova visible to amateur astronomers in 2024 was detected and published. Here is the equipment setup in my backyard that I used to image this galaxy and the supernova. I captured and integrated almost four hours of exposure time on it at 448 millimeter focal length and f-stop 5.6. And when I ran that photo through the online resource astrometry.net, the image I got back was annotated identifying 33 galaxies in just this 1.46 degrees field of view. Here, I cropped the image to show the most interesting central region around NGC 4126. Circled in green are six galaxies that are all spiral class in shape and exhibit some structure at this meager focal length. Some are seen edge-on, and others from different angles. These six galaxies are labeled here. They vary from about 60 million light-years to over 166 million light-years distant. The light from NGC 4216 and its supernova star have been traveling toward us since the early age of the rise of prehistoric mammals on Earth. Remember, it was 66 million years ago when the mass extinction event caused by a comet or asteroid impact ended the reign of the dinosaurs and wiped out most of the life on the planet. NGC 4216 is about 60 million light years away. Here again is the full image taken that night on January 25th and a close-up of the Silver Streak Galaxy. The focal length and aperture of my ADED refractor is a little inadequate for galaxy imaging, so the resolution is not quite so detailed. Unlike this reference image from the Stellarium Night Sky Simulation software, which shows much greater structure. But if you compare the two, one can plainly see a bright star in the lower galactic arm of NGC 4216 that is not present in the reference image. That is Supernova 2024-GY. It has been identified as a Type 1A supernova event, and the star will continue to be visible for several months, but eventually disappear forever from our view as the light energy dissipates away after the initial blast. By the end of this year, it will once again look like the Stellarium reference image. Around this same time next year, I plan to take another image to compare and confirm the disappearance of the SN2024-GY supernova. 
So what is a type 1 supernova? Well, this type only occurs in multiple star systems. At least a binary system is required, and usually with one red giant star. It has been proposed that most star systems are different than our solar system. Rather, they are comprised of two or more stars that are gravitationally bound. What happens is the red giant expands a bit too much, such that the gravity of the smaller and denser star, usually a dwarf star, begins to strip material away, forming an accretion disk around it. Simply summarized, the consequential rapid increase in mass of the dwarf eventually reaches a critical point where gravity overcomes the outward pressure of nuclear fusion and core collapse occurs, igniting it into a supernova. It is interesting that everything we know about supernovae comes from mathematical theory, remnants, and observing supernova events in other galaxies. In the last several hundred years, man has never witnessed a supernova within our own Milky Way galaxy. In fact, in the last 2,000 years, only about 10 are known to have occurred. There were probably more, but only about 10 have been identified or documented historically. The most recent to be seen was in 1604 in the constellation Ophiuchus. This resulted in Kepler's supernova remnant that we can see today. Over 250 galactic supernova remnants have been identified and cataloged in the Milky Way, but many, many more remnants, and even supernovae themselves, are likely to be obscured by stars and dust in the galactic core and other nebulae. In fact, Modern theory is that perhaps one supernova occurs in our galaxy about every 50 years. The SN 2024 GY supernova was discovered in Japan by this guy, Koichi Itagaki. He seems to be very renowned in the astronomy community. He has been credited with first identification of about 173 supernova and dozens of comets. Itagaki-san has been in amateur astronomy for decades and now is into his eighth decade of life. He lives in northern Japan in Yamagata Prefecture and from the looks of it has quite an impressive collection of observatory domes and equipment in his private collection. At the bottom of this slide is a link to a reference article published about him and his incredible efforts. No, I have never met Itagaki-san here in Japan but a desire to visit him in his observatories is now on my personal bucket list. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, winter has a reputation of being galaxy season among astrophotographers. And it is the best time to catch a glimpse of a supernova with amateur equipment. They may not be as colorful or as beautiful as nebulae regions or other deep sky objects, but the idea that we, with our backyard telescopes, can glimpse millions of light years in distance and eons of time into the past and occasionally observe the incomprehensible power released by a collapsing star is mind-boggling and beautiful in a unique and different way. At least, that is what I think. Thanks for joining me on this brief video. Please come back again soon and join me for another episode of Astrophotography Japan. My name is Paul Cheesejo, and I am an astrophotographer.